how Trump's second term will be different. Um, yeah, so I didn't uh, end up streaming yesterday or whatever as of the day of recording this, but if you don't know, Trump is the one. And uh, yeah, whether you like bro or not, you know what I'm saying, he is a part of a big branch of the US now. Um, and yeah, you gotta call out the good and the bad. And if you voted, if, if you voted for him, you got what you wanted. If you voted against him, I guess uh, unfortunately you didn't get what you wanted. I already talked about this on my IG, y'all, but I'm gonna tell y'all the moment I exactly knew this was gonna win, bro. So I went to go early vote, like two or three weeks ago, as of the time recording, it's November 7th. So maybe, I don't know, whenever it opened, it might have been October 21st or something when I voted. So I voted very early. When I tell y'all, there was not a single person my age in that line. That just made me come and realize that y'all just be internet warriors. The amount of people I saw my age talking about, oh yeah, we're about to have the first woman as president, this and that. Where were y'all at? I did not see a single one. Then again, I do live where I voted a more older type area, but even still, bro, it was like a large amount where I'm like, damn, bro, where are y'all at? If people were gonna win this or wanted to win this for Kamala, they would have came out. But let's go ahead and see how Trump's second term will be different. Donald Trump will become the 47th president of the United States. I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th I think what's even worse for the people that are like democratic and shit, bro, the won the popular vote. People actually like rocked with him. Even with Hillary Clinton, bro, she won the popular vote. Like people liked her universally more than him. Is it in your 45th president? So I think we should start off by just saying what's happening. And then my big question is gonna be, how should we be thinking about this? Mm. We now know that Donald Trump is returning to the White House. American voters have seen what Trump had to offer and at least a critical mass of them decided they wanna do the same thing again. I called up some colleagues at Vox to ask what we should be making of this moment. And I ended up spending a long time- The thing time is, whether you like him or not, I will say is his messaging for people that actually like work in was simply good, bro. Like he was talking about, oh, oh, we're gonna eliminate these taxes, that taxes and stuff like that. And then for the regular person, they're like, okay, my money's about to go down, shit. But uh, yeah, he appealed to people. Even if he doesn't do shit, he managed to get his message out. I'm talking to Zach. I'm Zach Beecham. I'm a senior correspondent at Vox. Zach writes about mm. reactionary politics, the right wing, basically. And mm. the thing that he really wanted me to understand is that even though the outcome of this election is the same as the 2016 election, the Trump who is about to become president is different. Donald Trump is much more organized. Nah, I know he got an ego like, man, they thought I couldn't do this shit, bro. I know he got an ego because of that. Just because of that, he might do some ego shit White House. He knows what he's doing, has a series of mm. distinct policy objectives that he's reiterated again and again. It will be in a lot of ways fundamentally different than what we all lived through four years ago. I think ago. it'll be different. Let's see. Lock up the Bidens, lock up Hillary, lock them up. The first time Trump was president, he wanted to do all sorts of very controversial things. And a lot of times he didn't. I would say, honestly, he was saying worse stuff back then than now. Hey guys, Tom NFG here. Did you know only half of you guys are subscribed and even less of you guys have noties on? Uh, I hate to be a burden, but, uh, you know, I really appreciate it if you hit that sub button and the little bell next to it, you know? It doesn't take long. I know you can get mixed up in the algorithm and everything. But yeah, also tune into the streams, you know? We, we have a lot of fun over there, I'm telling you. We, we have a lot of parties going on over there. Yeah, uh, that's it, bye. <sighs> Damn. Like, the fact that my Hispanic homies was dapping each other up, bro, I was literally in eighth grade and they was dapping each other up thinking that they were about to get deported like bro now i think he added a little bit more precaution to his speeches and stuff but it's still like wild regardless wild actually shit. end up doing that one big example is wanting his critics and political opponents to be prosecuted he was mm. constrained by other parts of the political system the guardrails of democracy i'm andrew prokop i cover politics the guardrails encompass first congress and the courts but all also within the executive branch, you have Trump's own appointees for top positions who often last time around proved unwilling to carry out some of the things he wanted to do. Then you also have the permanent civil service career employees that he can't fire at will. Well, first of all, the courts have grown more conservative and more Trump friendly since he put three of his own appointees in the Supreme Court. Congressional Republicans have grown much more pro-Trump. 
Trump and the people around him want hardcore MAGA true believers staffing the government who will not have these pesky qualms about legality or ethics or things like that. And regarding the civil service. See, I feel like if that happens, like people are saying he's going to become a tyrant and stuff. The reason why I don't think that is what if another party comes in and just uses the policies you did on theirs, right? And they just like do everything for themselves. Then y'all would be complaining and then you it would look stupid and then again you know you never know i always gotta say you never know i don't know this nigga got a fucking crazy ego the world don't know what he's about to do trump wants to use an executive order to reclassify thousands of people with civil service protections against firing as political appointees who he can fire to then put in a lot of maga loyalists in their place instead he's had four years to basically stew over you know what he didn't get to do last time and uh what um he would do differently if he was given another chance and now he will seemingly get that chance we're gonna have the largest deportation in the history of our country the mantra that trump had on the border on 2016 was build the wall that was his mm. centerpiece of his immigration platform that sort of changed over the course of his president i remember he said they're gonna build the wall and they're gonna make mexico pay for it and that shit just never happened like i wonder what would be different if you wanted to do it now because how would it be possible to do it if you couldn't do it the first time around i don't know maybe it was some legal problems or something with it i guess i didn't see and increasingly he wanted to turn his intention not to the border but to the interior of the u.s the undocumented mm. population here. I'm Nicole Norea and I cover politics and immigration for Vox. Under Biden, there were record levels of people arriving on the border. We've seen those numbers come down significantly in 2024, but when Americans are polled, large portions of them say that they want mass deportations. They might be thinking about mm. people being deported immediately after they arrive on the border, um, but that's not what Trump's contemplating. He's trying to go into communities across the U.S. and we're talking about people who have lived here you know, for years and decades. That would sort of involve huge investments in, in law enforcement and also the cooperation of local law enforcement agencies, which I'm not sure we would see necessarily in democratic states, but let's say in states like Texas and Florida. Yeah, the thing is they can't even enforce some of these policies in like a lot of places and stuff. Like people even forget like abortion right now is only enforced in like certain states and stuff like that. I don't know if people that are voting in different states are thinking it's going to happen in their state. Like the government or whatever that runs their state has to allow it. Certainly you might find law enforcement willing to cooperate with federal immigration authorities there. Mm. A landmark decision in American history as it relates to presidential power. When Trump initially took office, the median vote on the Supreme Court was a moderate conservative, someone who would draw the line somewhere. Then Trump appointed a third of the United States Supreme Court. I'm Ian Milheiser. I cover the Supreme Court at Fox. Trump v. United States is the decision that came down last July concerning mm. special prosecutor Jack Smith's um, indictment of Trump for trying to steal the 2020 presidential election. Trump made this really outlandish argument that he could not be charged with a crime for any official acts he committed while president. Pretty much everyone- Which is crazy work. Wait, so if that's the case, if they sign a law where a president has immunity to any crime, couldn't like a president just, you know, pack another one before it happens? What if old man Biden is really pissed and he's like, you know what? Nah, let me stop. FBI, I just want to mention this is a family friendly message. I don't promote anything like that. But like, yo, what if that happens? What if that happens to future presidents or some shit? You'd be cooked, buddy that that argument was silly and ridiculous and there was no chance that the court would ever adopt it. And then all six of the Republican justices adopted it. What that decision said, it, it said that Donald Trump is immune from criminal prosecution for crimes that he commits using the official powers of office. Trump is allowed to give any order he wants to the Department of Justice. The basic matter is just that anything he does can potentially be beyond the scope of the criminal justice process. Mm. More than 40,000 Palestinians killed since the October 7th Hamas massacre. Right now, the situation on the ground in Gaza is an extraordinary humanitarian crisis and a moral stain on the United States uh, for enabling so much of this to happen. But it can always get worse. 
Trump has a blank check approach to Israel. He and his advisors don't believe in any of the- I'm gonna be honest y'all with this whole war conflict and whatnot, no matter who got elected, shit wasn't gonna change. Maybe it would have ended in a different way. Who knows how it's gonna end to be honest, but maybe it will end in a more, I don't know, type of way. Feeble restraints it was gonna that be the somewhere. Biden administration had put on Israeli conduct. There are factions mm. inside the Israeli government that have different visions of how to conduct the war. The extreme right on Netanyahu's flank. People like Bezalel Smotrich and Itamar Ben Gavir believe that Trump will let them do what they want based on what he said, what his advisors say, and what his political coalition at home wants. Hell are you no. on board with the way the IDF is taking the fight to Ga in Gaza? You've got to finish the problem. These people have a maximalist vision of what they want the war to be. Actually seizing and taking Gaza for Israel and returning to settlement, right, to rebuilding Israeli outposts, moving Israeli Jewish citizens in to make sure that its control over the area never slips. That would mean not just temporary eviction of Gazans from their homes and their cities, which would be bad enough. It would mean creating a massive permanent refugee population. Outside of Gaza, in the West Bank, we can only imagine previous American position has been you shall not under any circumstances annex parts of the West Bank. It would be Israel declaring- Bro, the crazy thing is, there's pro-Palestine people that voted for Trump, bro. This man more than likely is going to be worse than her. Like I said, you never know, but on this exact issue, I don't see like a good outcome. In essence, it's willingness to rule over the Palestinians in perpetuity. What I do know for sure is that a Trump administration would do nothing to punish them for it. Mm. Okay, let's make this quick. I'm Adam. I produced this video. I think it is fair to say this is a historic moment. Uh, and one thing it shows is that we truly do not know uh, what the future holds. In these next four years, journalism is going to be important. Uh, things will be confusing. It will sometimes be a struggle to know exactly what you should be paying mm. attention to. We would like to be a place. I think honestly, bro, with the media, y'all, I'd be on Twitter and be seeing the biggest misinformation ever. Granted, that is Twitter. But like media needs to make a change and be re more realistic and stuff. Cause bro, people really didn't think he was gonna win by this much, like at all. Let me let bro keep talking. You come to have your biggest questions answered. Whether on our YouTube channel, our podcasts, our newsletters, our website, hmm. our reporters, like the ones that you have seen in this video, their job is to point you to what actually matters. If you believe in that mission, the best way you can support it is by becoming a Vox member. It supports all the work that we do at Vox, and mm. honestly, it'll also probably just help us do more videos like this that are hopefully bringing you crucial information right when it is most valuable. You can do that at vox.com slash memberships. Thanks. Trump declared he would veto a national abortion ban if he's reelected. Trump winning the presidency is not good for abortion rights. I mean, he's been out there claiming that he's the father of IVF, that he's gonna be great for women's rights. But he surrounds himself with lots of people who absolutely, you know, do not have that as their goal. I'm Rachel Cohen. I cover social policy at Vox, and I've been really focused on abortion rights for the last two and a half years since Roe was overturned. Something that has been confusing for voters is that I don't think we're going to see a federal ban coming out of Congress. The biggest way that Trump could, I think, use his executive power to restrict abortion rights is to push for the enforcement of the Comstock Act on the federal level. The Comstock Act was this they law- They got acts from 1873 that they can put back in. Okay, that's actually scary now that I think of it. I'll pass in 1873, and among other things, it banned mailing anything associated with abortion. When the Supreme Court legalized mm. abortion nationwide- I didn't even know they had stuff like that back then in 1873, like they had Plan B and shit. The Comstock Act was rendered moot. It didn't matter anymore, but Congress never actually repealed it. Now that mm. Roe has been overturned, you have a bunch of conservatives, including J.D. Vance, who are saying now is the time actually to enforce this zombie law that's been on the books for decades that people forgot about, and we should ban anything associated with abortion from being sent in the mail. So that could include not only abortion pills, which are used in the majority of abortions in the US, but it could also mean any medical equipment associated with you know, surgical abortion, like dilators or speculums. That would effectively mean a nationwide ban on abortion. Yeah, that just wouldn't be a good look. That that would be a terrible thing. Putting a law back from 1873s is just a terrible look in general. Some might say it's economic nationalism. I call it common sense. The thing about tariffs is that the president has a lot of unilateral authority to impose them without Congress's will. 
I'm Eric Levitz, and I write about politics and policy. A tariff is basically a tax on an imported good. Usually, the producer passes on the cost of that tax to consumers um, by charging higher prices to compensate for the tax. Trump's signature proposal on tariffs in the 2024 campaign was a 10% tariff on all foreign imports, regardless of what country they come from and regardless of, of what kind of good it is, which includes things that the United States cannot possibly produce. There's no tax that you can put on foreign coffee beans that will make it possible to grow them in New England. The general consensus from economists is that this is going to significantly increase prices. I wonder if they could America. pick like certain things that they won't do it to and then certain things that they do, like maybe like big things like a car or some shit, they would charge like a tax on it or not. Americans, as well as I know, actually I think America does undermining that American manufacturing. I think that in general, voters tend to be sympathetic to any protectionist trade policy. But I think that in practice, as we've seen in the Biden years, voters are very sensitive to increases in consumer prices. On the other hand, though, this is something that Trump really genuinely seems to believe and hold as a, as a core economic principle, really since the late 1980s. We let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. Put. It's crazy that this man was older than me by like 30 years in like 1988. I've been thinking of shit like that. A 25% tax on products that come into the United States. Mm -hmm. So that means- Damn, that he said that in 2011? Um, plausibly could enact this tariff even if a majority of Republicans in Congress do not want him to. Mm. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. And we're going to try. We're gonna I'm not going to lie. The country is not going to be united, bro. It wasn't going to be united if Kamala won. Because his fans was going to be mad. It was never going to be united, bro. Maybe after Trump leaves and then there's like a new era of people and politicians and whatnot, maybe it'll be united. I don't know. But we'll have to see. But right now, gang, this is not about to be united. We try. We have to try. In any democratic system of government, you need nonpartisan civil servants whose job it is to follow and implement the law. A lot of that stuff is technical, from National Parks Administration to the way the Defense Department is run, to the way that we um, protect and store our nuclear weapons. Trump doesn't like this. Neutral rules of governance obstruct his ability to govern like a kind of machine politician who uses government as a tool of rewarding his friends and punishing his enemies. That's why he hates what he calls the deep state. Demolish the deep state. Obliterate the deep state. Dismantle the deep state. We could be in a world Damn, where he said it three times. Because there are no legislative guardrails against this. What if the IRS is now a fully political agency and audits are coming in along political lines? Businesses or media organizations that are critical of Trump start being- You're telling me the IRS could potentially come for me more? Yeah, but that moment, hmm, where am I moving? Um, the UK. Let me see. Um, hmm, 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 fucking Madagascar. I wish they would come to me and try to tax me more or some shit. Being harassed using the tax code as a means of punishing them. Think about everything that you rely on government to do. And now imagine those tasks being bent towards political ends. Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States again. And this time around, we'll make the first time look like child's play. Hmm. Uh, W video. Look, all the people that are sad and shit, whatever and stuff about this, just know, bro. I'm, I'm gonna say 99% of y'all is gonna be good, bro. The same worry exactly happened in 2016. Then again, you never know. Could just be goddamn, just a tyrant start wilding out or something like that. Yeah, anyways, if you're watching on the tube, make sure to join the Discord and watch the streams. Subscribe to Tommy NFG.